Good morning and happy Monday. Today is day 119 and today is the first day we're going to start focusing on the area and volume of figures and this is work we're going to be focused on for a few days this week. By now we appreciate that you have already, number one, read through today's objectives and key terms. The objectives, your main learning goals, were found right here and the key terms which we need to read through each day were shown here. We appreciate that you also completed today's exploratory problems with your partner or at least attempted to complete those problems on your own and now you're on step three where you're going to analyze your work on those problems by watching today's video recap. Before we get into the problems we're going to do a quick review or overview of the objectives and the key terms. Today our big focus is finding area, which is how much space is taken up by 2D figures like squares, circles, and also finding volume, which is how much space is taken up by solid three-dimensional figures. We've done cubes and prisms before in prior grades, and in eighth grade we're going to move into cylinders and cones, and you'll see both of those today in the practice problems. The cylinder, which we'll highlight here, looks like a can of soup, and if we're getting technical, we'd call it a three-dimensional shape. And the two circular bases, the top and the bottom, are connected to each other with parallel lines. So for review, to start in exploratory problems, we're giving you shapes that you have seen in sixth grade and seventh grade already and worked on finding the area and the volume. The key today is we're going to be regularly utilizing our MCAS reference sheet because that helpfully provides the formulas for all the areas and volumes of any shape you'll work with in eighth grade. So if you go ahead and click on this link right here, that should open up your MCAS reference sheet. And this MCAS reference sheet I'm looking at here is going to be key to finding the area of any of the figures we work with and finding the volume for any of the figures we work with. Tabbing back to our work on the video lesson here today, the first problem asks us what kind of two-dimensional shape is shown above, and that's this purple circle we see here. So hopefully a bunch of you identified this as a circle, a two-dimensional shape that's just perfectly round. The next part they asked us, what is the formula that can be used to find the area for the shape? So again, you would go to your MCAS reference sheet. I'm looking for area. The shape that I'm working with is a circle, and I see the formula is A equals pi r squared. So I'm going to go ahead and put that formula in there. A for area is equal to pi times the radius, and the radius has to be squared. You could rewrite this the way they have it. You could just say a equals pi r squared, but the big key is to recognize a stands for area, and r stands for radius. So our area is going to be pi, which we know is really 3.14. That's fine to use all the time times r squared. That's how we find the area of a circle. So the big key here, and I'm going to ask that you do on this on your own, you've put a I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you do part C on your own. You've probably already completed this. You're going to use this formula, area equals pi r squared, to determine the area. And the biggest key you would have to see is that the radius up here, if we take a look at this purple circle, the radius was 5 inches. So once I know that, I would just plug in the 5 for this. So I'm going to copy this equation, actually, put it down here. And instead of showing you an image of the work, we would replace the radius with 5. And then order of operations says we would do 5 times 5, which is 25. So whatever 25 times pi is should provide you with the area here. The big key to recognize after we do that, 25 times pi, or 25 times 3.14, we're going to ultimately end up with an area that is in square inches. You can write this square inches as inches with a little exponent of two. Square inches just like that. And I'll go ahead and show you on the calculator because it's okay to use 25 times pi or 25 times 3.14 would have given us 78.5. Hopefully you did that along with me. You figured out the area for the circle is 78. 0.5 square inches, and that's what happens when we plug a radius of 5 inches into this area formula. At this point, the 
So at this point, we would ask that you pause the video if you struggled on part B. And now that you heard our work from part A and looked through that, I'd ask you to try to again complete part B on your own before watching me complete it here. Feel free to talk to your partner as well as you're working through part B now that we have a better understanding of how to use this MCAS reference sheet. And now that you're back, part A says what kind of 3D shape is shown above? Here we have to recognize the height, the length, and the width are all the same. So we could call this a cube. First, we could call it a rectangular prism. But this is a special kind of rectangular prism since the length, width, and height are the same. We would call it a cube. You'll remember from fifth grade and sixth grade, the volume for cubes was length times width times height. Or the MCAS reference sheet is going to tell you the volume for cubes is V equals S cubed. V equals S to the power of 3. And here in this situation, in this situation, the V stands for volume and the S stands for the side length of the cube. And we should recognize, let me fix the colors here quick. We should recognize in this situation that because the cube has the same length and width and height, the formula transforms from volume equals length times width times height, or volume equals base times height, which is what we did for our prisms, to volume equals s cubed. Now, as we see, this formula is pretty simple. Once we know S, the side length, that's all we need to find the volume. So I'm going to copy this formula down to here as part of my work. V equals S cubed, and I know the side length is 4. So all we're going to have to do is 4 to the third power. 4 centimeters times 4 centimeters times 4 centimeters. And hopefully you remember from our work on cube roots and exponents that 4 to the third power is 4 means the volume of our shape here, the volume of our cube, is 64 cubic centimeters because we did 4 centimeters times 4 centimeters times 4 centimeters. One final key we'll point out, you should recognize from now on that volume, since it's in three dimensions, will always be in cubic units, in this case cubic centimeters. And area is always going to be in square inches because area measures how much space two-dimensional shapes take up. So we're always going to be doing inches times inches or centimeters times centimeters. Two-dimensional shapes have a volume unit or an, a unit for area that's to the second power. That should make sense. Two-dimensional, second power. And three-dimensional figures measure volume, and they will have units to the third power or cubic units. Last thing we'd ask for Part C, please, before you go on to the practice problems today, Make sure you're taking some time to complete part C, which says you're going to write about one new thing you've learned about area and volume before you move into the blue practice problems today. Thank you for watching the end of the video. Thank you for a great start, and definitely let me or Miss Stewart know if you and your partner need any help as you're working today.